Lecture number one, April fifteenth, nineteen seventy-five. Introduction to the study. First excerpt. Initial invocation and introductory comments. Second excerpt. Mother gives Kathumi's comments, then reads and gives the master's explanation of the first sentence from chapter one. In the name of the Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, I call to the heart of the great central sun. Beloved mighty Estrella, lock your cosmic circle and sword will flame around the cause and core of all opposition to the victory of the light in all mankind. I demand action with the heart of the great central sun magnet. Blaze the light of ten thousand suns. Blaze the light of blue lightning. Blaze the action of Amoria. Blaze the light of Moria. Blaze the fire of Moria and let God's will be done. The light of God never fails and the beloved mighty I am presence is that light. In the name of Almighty God, we consecrate this course to the flame of cosmic Christ illumination for the exacting in the auras of those who are here of the will of God, of the fire of God, of the wisdom of God, and the purity of God. Let that force now be the action of love that propels mankind to the victory. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I call for that action of the law that will bring all into alignment this day. We will take chapter one, the perfecting of the aura. I would like to say that the more I experience the path and the more I experience chileship, the more I recognize that the ones who make it are the ones who have the will. And no one can produce that will for you. The will is the action of the ray and of the light that fills the aura, that clears the aura, that does anything that you want to do. I have the experience of dealing with people who will take and take and take the teaching. They will take the light, they will take the radiation, but there is no action in return. Moria says that action is the highest love. If you can't act for God, don't give me excuses. Over and over again, people will bask in the light of the ascended masters, but when it comes time to show what they're made of, they're not there. They're not ready for the smallest sacrifice of an aspect of the human consciousness to make light count for the masters, to make some action here count, to make their footsteps recording. So when you come to the aura, and you come to the mastery of the aura as we take up this course. Realize that not only this course, but the entire Ascended Master's course is for those who are going to summon the will to do something on their own. And people come here and they think that I am a replacement for their will. If they see me up here, somehow it tells them that everything is right with themselves because I'm right and I'm okay and somehow the light I'm carrying is going to carry them home. Or they think the decrees do the work. So they give the decrees and then they don't have to do anything else. The decrees did it. They don't even have to listen or concentrate while they're decreeing. They just have to come in and mouth the words. They've put in their time. So the decrees are equivalent to mastery and they're not. Decrees are a means to mastery. This course is a means to mastery. I'm a means to your mastery. And all, that, all of this is, is the perfect environment for you to summon your own will. It's the doers that make it, and the doers can't do anything without will. So as we begin this course, I want you to take your will back to yourself. You may find that you're dependent for your will upon your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband. Someone in your life is assuming that identity for you, that will. And most of all, I want you to take the will back from me and back from the Ascended Masters. And don't think because you're around the masters or you're around me that we are substitutes for your will. Will involves motive. And motive goes to the very depth of the subconscious of your being. You can do all kinds of things on the surface to fool yourself into thinking that you're pious. But if your subconscious will is for ego strutting and ego gratification, and if you're really using the teachings to get something you never could get out there in the world because somehow the world dealt you a hard deal, you're not in the right place and you're not on the right path because this is the path of the ascension. And if you want your ascension, you've got to lay down everything 
all and everything. You have to lay down your life that the Christ can appear in you to all mankind. So we have to get over this coddling of the self, this babying of the self, finding every excuse not to do the work, not to be in class, not to go out and fight a good fight for God. The thrust of your will determines where you rest. When you are young, when you have life ahead of you, every decision you make is a decision that is a spiral that will continue all your life. And you have to be careful that these decisions don't come again, these opportunities don't come again. So you determine the measure of your sacrifice. You determine how wide the ring is going to be. You determine where your will is going to rest and you create a mandala by your will. By your will, your commitment, and your follow-up of action, hierarchy decides, the karmic board decides who they will draw around you to assist you to fulfill this plan. They determine who is going to be suitable to be ministers, to be teachers, who is going to have enough sacrifice so that they can be filled with enough light to convert a city, to bring that city into the teachings. So it's all a question of decision. Where will your decision be? Where will your will come to rest? Wherever it comes to rest, whatever perch, whatever limb of the tree, the bird of your soul rests at, that is where the spiral will begin and that will determine the breadth and height and depth of your life and your accomplishment. There are some people in life who live a very mediocre personal existence. All they ever know is their little intimate family circle. They don't even make a splash because that's where their will is, that tiny little coil of selfishness. And there are others who are able to see the larger vision and they make a wider cycle of their identity. Now, in Summit University, you have the opportunity to determine to make the ripples that come out from your being fill a planet. And there is no point making anything less than the planet your goal. It's the wide goal. The now goal may be your community, your state, your nation, or a continent, an area where you can serve. But to confine your decrees your consciousness, your action to some little nitpicky little project is folly. It's no time for that. We've all done this in past embodiments. We've spent entire embodiments over one garden patch or one little section of the monastery. It's time to broaden our outlook and our outreach. And the only way we can do it is to get that karma into the flame. The whole point of the study of the Human Aura series by Kathumi is to show you that your aura is a force field that God can use. That really your aura is God. That your aura is a giant egg that you live in. It's your cosmos. It's like the little boy that is born without white blood cells and he has to live in a plastic container and breathe only purified air. That plastic container that he's lived in for two years is his aura. It's his field. And that's as far as he will ever go in this life, unless he is healed. And your aura is your receptacle, and unless that aura is clean and sparkling and crystal clear, everything you know and all the sweet talk is not going to count. One iota on the cosmic scale. And when cosmic councils look at the map of the cosmos to see where is the light matrix, where is the individual, that is carrying a flame. They see a screen of the whole cosmos. They can look down in one glance and identify the light bearers by the reading of the aura. On every planet, on every system of worlds, it's there, right there, clear. And they have instruments where they can zero in on a certain planet or a certain space and widen it again. And therefore, the sons and daughters of God who are evolving, who are increasing, are known. You are known by cosmic councils, your names are written. And when you increase that aura, instantly the blip appears on that screen. And they say, aha, there's someone with a more than ordinary desire to be God. They don't even listen to the babble of human conversation. They're not interested in all of that nonsense. They're interested in action because action is what shows up on the aura as a definite mark of potential.
everything else shows up on the aura too. But that's all screened out because cosmic councils who are determining the fate of the planet are not interested in anything but those who are actors on the stage of life. You cannot keep anything in your aura that you do not have by attainment because light will seek its own source. So you have to make light, even light, your own. That's why you feel high in a dictation or high in school and you go out and you go back to the norm of your human consciousness because you haven't made it your own. By and by, you can sustain from dictation to dictation a very high flame. And by that <laughs> sustainment, you know that you are winning, that you have attainment, and that you're keeping and holding on to what God has given you. It's a kind of feeling that it evaporates. Do you ever have that feeling that the light just evaporated from you? One thing, it's being absorbed by your four lower bodies. Another thing, it's being absorbed by the world. So you have to learn to seal the aura. And the action of the sealing of the aura is very important as we take up this study. The perfecting of the aura can only come by the flame of perfection, which is the flame of God's will. The flame of perfection is also the white light. But perfection is the will of God. And this particular chapter is addressed to all who would see and know and be the truth. You have to see the truth and know the truth in order to be the truth. Unless you make yourself a chila to a guru who sees the truth and knows the truth for you. And you give absolute obedience to that guru until the hour when by your obedience you earn the right to see and know. You can be the truth right now by simply accepting a directive from me to affirm, I am that I am. You may not see that I am that I am. You may not see that you are the I am that I am as I see you in your blazing glory. You may not know it, but because you accept me as the teacher or as the teacher's representative, you can be the truth. This is why obedience has figured so importantly on the path of attainment all through the centuries. People have gotten themselves so mixed up with their carnal minds, with the blocking of their chakras, with the covering over of the all-seeing eye, that even when they desire to be the truth, they have a karma of having to carry their blindness and their ignorance for a time. And the way to balance that karma is to get a teacher and obey that teacher and serve that teacher and by being with that teacher the scales of blindness the weight of ignorance is dissolved falls from you and you awaken one day in the likeness of God and you are the living truth it can happen rather quickly in terms of the thousands of years that we have been engulfed in the human consciousness and quickly is a lifetime quickly is a decade by your taking this torch of the fire of action today, you can make the next decade be the time when you move from darkness to light, almost in a total sense. So much light can be yours in a decade, in a year, in 12 weeks. So I trust that the thrust of this energy, together with that of Moria in his pearls, the very presence of Moria in our midst will give you a new sense of coming into alignment with God power and God victory. As we commence these auric studies, let it be understood that the combined manifestation of body, soul, and mind <coughs> creates around the spinal column and the medulla oblongata those emanations called by some the human aura and by others the magnetic force field of the body of man. Body, soul, mind. An awful lot goes into the matrix of your aura. The body itself has an emanation. If it is unhealthy, impure, or fatigued, that will continue to muddy your aura. And what we call your health aura will not be clear. You can be drained of vitality. Your soul is who you really are. If you look at a picture of yourself anywhere from age two to five, you will see a picture of your soul. 
You will see your soul looking through your form in your eyes. You may see purity and you may see impurity, but you will look at what you came with and you will make your decision on how to change and perfect. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. We know the soul can be contaminated. We know that the soul is the inner nucleus of being. It's like the center of the cell. It is vital energy. The soul is aware of all things, even as the outer consciousness camouflages and is fooled by and is completely caught up with outer senses and the carnal mind. The soul is not fooled, but the soul may be rebellious. We speak of rebellious souls. We speak of souls in all types of human conditions because the soul <clears throat> is that element which has the free will to either become the Christ or to not become the Christ. The soul uses the four lower bodies as the vehicle. If the four lower bodies are running away with the show, it's because the soul has allowed it. By rebellion, by fear, by shock, many souls upon the planet are simply in a state of shell shock. They are in such a state of shock from previous cataclysm, <coughs> from the judgments of God that have been meted to them, that sometimes an entire embodiment or several embodiments, they are not able to do anything. They simply are kind of dormant inside of man and the outer consciousness is a vegetable, vegetating. <clears throat>